There were three really intensive workshops today, and as usual, um, one of the nice things about Saturday is that we get to hear what happened at the workshop, or at least the, the cleaned up version of what happened at the workshop. <laughs> Um, so this, uh, so to start, we're going to have three of the participants in uh, all of seniors workshop, and would they come up? We've got Amber Homanick, uh, Matthew George, and Bonnie Gardner. Less is more on the subject of cultivating brevity, and my poem from that workshop is called Threads. Oh my Shelley, we survived. Fourth grade. Ninth, dance costumes, braces, driver's ed, university. Vancouver, Ottawa, Toronto, Boston. Partners, husbands, children, jobs. Grandmothers, passings. 25 years and countless miles of clothes flipped along rails, but not my illness. This year, my calls unanswered and an empty hanger in my hand. Thank you. Hello, my name's uh, Matthew. Uh, I didn't know I needed a title for my poem, but I guess I'll call it Melted. <laughs> it's quite short. Anyway, uh, chocolate chip cookies melted to your face, your hands, the carpet, the couch. Yet you look at me as if to say, but you love me. And I do. I do. I do. I do. Hunger. Towering over me, wide and heavy, your stainless steel exterior. Why do I try to open the door? You, like a fridge, a blast of cold, frost filling the air. Nothing but condiments inside. I come grazing to you, craving a substantial meal. Where's the beef? <laughs> Some things really come home to me today, and that's the generosity of all three workshop leaders and um, giving much more than what's just necessary, like a fountain that spills over and over and over. And uh, any of us who were lucky enough to be there have been filled and filled and filled. So thank you. Um, Barry Dempster's was the third workshop today, and um, it was called Poetry and Immersion. And we soon understood why Hazel introduced him last night as, oh, Barry Dempster. <laughs> <laughs> he covered uh, four things you need to know. Pay attention specifically. See, remember, feel what you are writing about. Write not what you know, but what you are on the verge of knowing. Plumb the mystery. Reflect the act of discovery and transformation. Use the senses, explore the musics, the sounds, the rhymes, the rhythms, the mood, the tone, and then he tricked us with a color exercise. <laughs> he kept bringing us in and in and in, um, closer and closer and closer to who we are and who we are on the verge of knowing. And the final exercise we did, he said, think of um, three colors that best describe you. And the first one I wrote down was molten lava red. Yes. I could write about that. And then the second was melted ice green. I could write about that. And the third one just popped into my head because I was out of ideas, and that was butterscotch. <laughs> I don't know. Then he talked about Young having said that the first answer to any question is always what you know. And the second is, uh oh, did I give too much away? And the second one is going to be safe. And the third one is actually where the truth slips in. So guess who had to write about butterscotch? <laughs> Hard, round-shouldered sweetness. Mum's favorite candy, metamorphosized with time and age and the topsy-turvy machinations of progress. I like the ones with the chocolate centers now, she smiles through thinning teeth. Her stories more open, full-bodied this visit. The boy she had a crush on had a name, 
Roger, a real good necker. He never touched me with his hands, though. I like that. <laughs> Her sister, Ruth, said he was like the song, You Always Love the One You're With. Mum has a memory of me, too, and I realize in retrospect how rare this is, unheard of, really, as she unveils 60 years of ripened disgust because once I farted in church. <laughs> and she glared at the boy she blamed for the heinous act until leaving, I confessed, Unable to listen to her contempt for the innocent lad, flood the night, leaving scabs on every leaf on the elm and maples, trying to escape, but rooted to the ground. She tells me, too, she's only been attracted to three men in the 30 years since Dad's death, all three of them French, all of them younger, prime. One of them, the chef across the street, tall, and knock him dead handsome. I do not like brittle butterscotch, only the chocolate at the center. Telling her to melt dark with milk bars together to cut the bitterness without sacrificing the sweetness. Terry Ann Carter led one of the other workshops today and she's going to come up and uh, tell us what they were up to. Terry Ann. It was a haiku workshop where we basically learned some techniques. How we capture the aha moment by either comparing images, contrasting images, associating images, or the wide angle coming in closer and then the close up, kind of framing the moment. And so three people from the workshop who were not able to be here this evening but wanted their poems read, and I said I certainly didn't mind reading them. They're absolutely lovely. I'm going to just stick with first names. From Feralith. Snow falls on snow. Sculptures form on ancient cedar. From Kathy Bird. Seed of spring, autumn leaves, the wind carried promise. And from Joan, sunset, oil slick still flows to sucking pump. <laughs> really interesting, the beauty of the sunset and then the terrible disaster. Um, Liz asked me if I would just quickly, it was a show and tell because I <clears throat> uh, take haiku and put them into small books and she said, could I just show two? So I'll show you this book, which is a book anyone can learn how to make because it has to do with folds. It's a book that you enter, so you need a photograph. The photograph could be a passageway, a doorway, a window. It opens by folds and then you have panorama with the haiku in the center. One style. I had a number of books with me and this is what I call a scroll book. It's inside a box. So lots of times recycle things are wonderful for bookmaking. This way? Okay. This way. <laughs> right. I also do yoga. So <laughs> The box opens like this. The scroll falls out like this. And now I have an installation for a wall. So we had a good time. Thank you. This year, uh, we had four workshops, which uh, apparently were spectacular. Uh, it's a tradition to have one des designated workshop P from each of the workshops performing on the main stage. This morning, uh, we had the last workshop, which was uh, led by uh, Lara Bozabalian. Got that close, I think. And I'd like to bring uh, a workshop from that workshop 
Catherine Edgecombe to the stage right now. Catherine. So the activity that we were uh, set to do was to take something beautiful and, and convince the reader that we didn't like it or to take something that we hated and convince the writer that we loved it. So this was uh, what I did. Most writers have to put their glasses on. I have to take mine off to read. All right. Your words, loud and clear, fill the air around me with meaning. My entry point in the, into the conversation is sheltered by your opinion. Spoken with determination and without hesitation, fill the empty spaces between my thoughts. Your willingness to make your point, no matter what the, out, the consequence, the assurity of your position left no doubt about the outcome of this final conversation. I am so delighted that there is no possibility of misunderstanding. 